um, at least of something new. I have been getting a lot of requests over the last couple of months to do another just talking video about um, a more like emotional topic or life advice, something to do with reality that we're all facing. And so I decided to sit down and do that. I've had a number of things on my mind, so I figure this will be a good way to get them out and share them with you. Um, before I start, I just have two really quick things. Um, number one, if you really do like this type of stuff and you enjoy hearing my opinion on things or you just like being able to hear about um, real life situations that have to do with psychology and emotions and just understanding uh, life a little bit more. I have been doing these wellness streams, as I call them, on Twitch, and I'm not trying to plug myself, even though that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just trying to offer to you, um, there is a playlist on my YouTube channel right now that is called Wellness Streams, and it has a backlog of a number of streams where I talk about a variety of different topics. It's very similar to when I do these sorts of ASMR videos, um, except I'm interacting with other people and there's a bit more science involved. I usually include um, resources, books or scholarly articles from journals, things like that. Um, it's pretty low-key though. It's kind of more like a podcast vibe, I guess. I'm not intentionally speaking softly or whispering, but uh, I do have a rather low and not very loud uh, voice in those moments anyway. So, um, if you're interested just feel free to check those out. They might have some topics that you're interested in. Um, secondly, just wanted to say to the people who I should have replied to by now, I'm sorry uh, whether you left a comment or if we usually talk frequently and we haven't been. Um, things in my life have just been incredibly busy, I guess. Um, I don't really do well with change and transition periods, and right now I'm going through a huge one. Um, as some of you know, I was starting massage therapy school, which I was incredibly excited for, and thanks to this outbreak and pandemic, um, the semester kind of got ruined, so I'm waiting to go to the next um, class that will be normal again, which I'm really bummed out about, but um, on top of that, I have a writing job that I do, and they offered me an editor position, which I accepted, and I'm really happy about it, but the workload is... it's okay. It's just a lot more time-consuming than I was expecting. Um, it wouldn't be that bad, except since we're on, like, quarantine or whatever. Um, my partner is also home from work. He's working from home until sometime in April at the very least, which means that twice a day I have to cook, which takes a really long time and a lot of energy. Um, so, between writing articles, editing articles, cooking two square meals a day, um, and trying to film and edit this stuff, and trying to exercise every day, and taking care of the dog and whatever, it's just been incredibly overwhelming. So, um, let's get into the video today. 
I'm really happy to be filming and doing this. I have been just dying to make ASMR, which feels really good. Um, but it's also really upsetting that I haven't been able to as much as I've wanted to. So, um, okay. Today I kind of just wanted to talk about... I don't know how to say this in a way that doesn't sound cheesy. But the only way I can really think to phrase it is being your own advocate. Um, and I'll explain that. So, this is something that has been on my mind a lot lately, and it's really been a long time coming. Even though it might sound simple, um, I'm finding that a lot of the lessons that we learn in life have to impact us in some way that's pretty major before we really understand them. Someone can tell us something over and over again and we might think that we understand it or we might not understand it at all. But it's really only over time that I guess you get that wisdom, maybe, and have the ability to fully recognize uh, what some of these more simple ideas really mean, or how they affect us. So, I guess the best way to start this is to say that I'm the kind of person who really looks to others for, I don't even know what to call it, support, or I just really enjoy that human element where someone has your back. I'm very much the kind of person who wants the ideal, loyal, uh, relationship with the people that I become friends with or uh, fall in love with or have in my family. Um, unfortunately, that has not happened for me almost 10 times out of 10 with every relationship that I have made in my life, which partially goes to show me that what I want is incredibly rare. Um, I just never really thought that because I see in movies and I read in articles about real life and um, books about real life these people who are very close-knit and who do support one another and have really just kind of magical relationships um, where they trust each other and they believe in one another and lift each other up to be better. Um, and for some whatever reason, I've just always wanted that. Um, I like the idea of having kind of a pack, and I like being able to share ideas with people and get their opinion, um, and really absorb what they have to say and just also to know that someone has my back. I know I said that, but really I guess that's the underlying thing, is to feel supported. So I've kind of been that way for literally as long as I can remember. I took my childhood friendships very seriously. Um, I took my familial relationships very seriously, and when I started dating, I took my romantic relationships very seriously. Um, that's just the kind of person I am, and maybe you're like that too, and maybe you're not. Either way, I think that this is a good concept to have, or at least be thinking about. Um, so, one of the things that I used to do a lot when I was younger and in contact with my family was that I would look to my mom for 
support and guidance and the go-ahead, I guess. I always kind of saw my mom as this figure who could, you know, fix anything and who knew everything and someone who could, who would always look out for me. Um, obviously a lot of you know that that was really complicated and didn't exactly, wasn't exactly going that way, but, um, my mom still definitely had that position of power in my life. She was the one who could tell me that I could or couldn't do something. She was the one who would protect me if I was about to do something stupid. She wasn't very maternal in the sense that she would go out of her way, but when it came to, like, logic, she was really good at that kind of stuff. She knew a lot of, like, street smarts, um, how to do certain things or how to speak, how to uh, carry yourself, how to, I don't know, any sort of etiquette thing that you're supposed to do. She was conservative, so she had all of those skills, politeness, and um, also she had a little bit of devilish kind of thing too. She would tell you not to, not to settle, you know, if your landlord was trying to get a hundred dollars out of you or something, she would always be like, no, you know, screw that. You need to fight for this. So I always kind of felt like she knew what was best in that sense. And for a very long time, I looked to my mom to tell me, essentially, what I should and shouldn't do. And even as I grew up and became my own person more and more, it was still kind of a security blanket type thing to know that I could just ask my mom and get kind of a definitive answer. She wasn't the kind of person who was very uh, wishy-washy, excuse me. She had answers to everything. She was very decisive. So that being the case, it was a nice it was something that I did for a really long time. As a matter of fact, when I was living in Virginia and I had decided in my head already that I was going to break up with my boyfriend up there and move back home, um, I called my mom every single day on my lunch break at school. <laughs> And I sat in my car, and I would eat my home-packed salad, and I would just complain on the phone and sometimes cry because I really wanted her to just tell me that I should break up with him. Um, I don't know if it was because she didn't want to seem too eager for me to come home, or if it was because she didn't want to be the cause of something that I would regret. Um, but she never would give me a really clear, what should I do? She would talk to me and listen to me very patiently, but I wanted her to say, break up with him, come home because I was having a really hard time making that decision for myself. I knew it was what I wanted, but putting it into motion seemed incredibly difficult at the time, and 
it felt kind of like a divorce because I had been living with this person for four years every single day. Um, they were my best friend and they had meant a lot to me. So leaving all of that, leaving my school, leaving my job and all of the, well, the few friends that I had made, everything that had become routine and regular to me just felt monumental. And in that situation, I of course turned to my security blanket and I wanted an easy way out, I guess. I didn't have the strength to do what I knew needed to be done. Eventually I did, but it took me about two months to actually work up the courage to make it happen. Um, and part of that is for the reason that I'm sort of building up to right now. In these situations, the thing that links all of this together is the fact that I never felt powerful. I never have had a voice inside my head or in my heart or whatever you want to say that says, you know what you're doing, just do it. You know, like, I'm not good at being definitive with myself. I wonder and I second guess and I worry that I'm going to do it wrong. And I think that that is actually a culmination of a lot of different things, you know, social rejections, hard times in my life that really affected me, and also my mom, who always knew best, you know. It's very difficult to make a mistake around someone who is going to put you down for it or make you feel stupid for doing the wrong thing. Um, and whether or not she meant to, that was the kind of person that my mom was. Just, uh, why'd you do that? Or you should have known better. Or just kind of like, oh my god, how could you not have known A, B, or C? And when someone treats you like that, or when you treat someone like that, it makes that person feel really nervous, insecure, and stupid. And I actually inherited that trait just by having it coming at me all the time. And it's something that I've had to work to eliminate from my sort of vocabulary. It's being like, you really didn't know that you're supposed to use a fork with that and not a spoon. Like, okay. Um, I would say kind of snarky things like that, I guess because it was what I was used to. And I think it's hard to recognize when that's your natural state of being or like your default. And I'm not trying to, you know, put my mom down or anything like that. Um, I'm just saying that that is kind of what happened for me. Maybe it was your brother or your sister or your cousin Maybe it's your aunt, your grandmother, or a different guardian, maybe a teacher even, um, that has made you feel powerless and stupid and small. Um, but you end up in this place where you can't be your own advocate, you can't stick up for yourself, you can't really make hard decisions for yourself and you don't believe in yourself. Um, and that's really detrimental to growing up and becoming a more whole, satisfied, and confident person. A lot of what links me and a lot of you together is the fact that we feel for lack of a better word, kind of weak. Um, like things have happened that have been shattering and sad and hurtful. Um, and that's not false, I think. 
life is hard and I've talked with a lot of you and I know that you have your own difficult situations, you have your own messed up family dynamics, you have your own hardships, and on some level everyone does. Um, but it's the mindset of how we look at that that kind of differentiates all of the people out there. The people who feel like they are confident and wonderful and can do anything, they're gonna look at these challenges and say, okay, that sucks, but I can handle it. I'm gonna do these 10 things and they're going to uh, get me through this, or I'm gonna pray, or I'm gonna, you know, connect with my whoever. And they power through and they have a different sort of perspective. Um, when you end up feeling so alone and like you don't really belong, um, like you're not very well understood, or that you haven't found your, like, people, you know, you don't know who your tribe is and you don't have those loyal, trusting relationships that you want and you just feel alone. You don't have the support system, really, that you need to thrive. Or maybe you do, but you just still have kind of leftover trauma, I guess, and sadness. Um, it makes it really difficult to be resilient when things get really hard. you. Maybe you have a really, really loyal person in your life who you can trust with everything and who you feel so, so close to, and that is fine. That doesn't counteract any of this. 
um, everyone, no matter who you are, needs to rely on themselves. Um, I always put my mom in this position of power, and lately I've been thinking, what if I was in that position of power? What if it was me who got to make the decisions about my life and who did so with clarity and a sense of determination and the same sort of bite that my mom had with all of that stuff? Um, what if I looked at my problems and just became very fortified, I don't know, and just strong in the face of whatever it was, and I would make decisions that are more cutthroat and less emotional and just kind of looking at myself or accepting myself as the one in charge. You know, what happens if I put myself in charge of myself? And instead of looking to others, I look to myself and just not allow myself to judge my answers or argue <laughs> with my answers. Because I never really argued that much with my mom's answers. I mean, sometimes if I really didn't agree with something that she was saying. But if I was looking to her for guidance, most of the time I took what she said as gospel and acted accordingly. And I don't think I've ever, I probably have sometimes, but the majority of the time I don't do that when it's me, when it's my thoughts and my authority. I don't take my own authority as seriously as I take the authority of those around me. I trust the people in my life to have a better opinion than I do. Why do I do that? You know, I guess it's conditioning over all these years, but it doesn't make sense, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Because I know me, and I am me, and I'm the only person who has ever been inside of my mind, to my knowledge. So, why would I think that someone else knows better? my mom. 
muscles and swim to shore, or that once I get to shore, I can stand up and run away from the ocean. You know, I don't have any of that in me most of the time. I usually just feel bad that these things are happening, and I'm so tired from dealing with them and feeling so just lost and powerless that it's hard for me to really even want to do anything, you know? It's really difficult to pick yourself up when you feel like everything's going against you. Um, and I know that sometimes people can dramatize and like, oh, you know, the world is against me. That's not really what I mean. I mean actual hard things that have happened, which we have to agree have happened for us. You know, it's perfectly valid if you came from an abusive household or you have, you know, horrible family members or if your best friend really betrayed you or if you got fired unfairly or if people, I don't know, if you tried to achieve something and random circumstances ruined it for you. Um, that's kind of like what's happening to me right now. I feel like I've worked through an insane amount of trials in my life, you know, dealing with depression anxiety, social issues, home life issues, leaving home, <laughs> moving away, moving back, feeling suicidal and dealing with attempts and thoughts and plans and therapy and the hospital and going through all of that and feeling sad about relationships that I don't have and trying to work myself out of being poor for so long and never having my own, you know, career, not having money to my name or a house or, you know, a car or anything that I, that I own that belongs to me. I don't have a lot. And I'm okay with that to a point, but I do want better for myself. I always have. I've always been someone who's very ambitious on the inside. And I, I made it through college. It took me a long time, but I got my undergraduate degree. Even dealing with agoraphobia and a panic disorder and having to get disability accommodations for school and the just crazy amount of stress and crap that I went through for so long and trying to find myself and figure myself out <laughs> and then I finally found something that felt and feels right for me something that I'm really passionate about and want to do with my life and I made huge steps in a very short period of time to accomplish that. I put myself in debt for the first time. I applied to a school and, you know, had to ask an old teacher for a letter of recommendation and had to go meet so many people and get used to a new place and do a lot of things that are really scary for me and I put myself out there like crazy through insane amounts of anxiety and now because of this illness that's going around it's not happening the way that I wanted at all um, I had it great plan for myself. I was gonna get my license right before my 30th birthday 
and go on a nice vacation and come back and get a job and I thought that by September of this year I was going to have my career started finally and um, it's not gonna happen that way and that just feels like the biggest slap in the face it's like holy shit <laughs> I've done so much to get to this point and the fact that now it's completely out of my control and ruined for, for what I wanted, not forever, but just the way that I wanted it to go is not going to happen. That, those kinds of things are hard to deal with. That's what I mean when I say that it feels like things are against me. I don't just mean that, oh, it rained today and I stepped in gum. Usually I'm, I don't care about those things. I just, some good things happen and some bad things happen. But it's just so unbelievable when you really try and work hard for something. You know, same thing with my degree. I busted my ass to get my college degree. I went through what felt like torture for multiple years to do that. I graduated close to the top of my class. I made a name for myself at the school. I did a lot. You know, I won poetry competitions and I drove to multiple states to be a reader, you know, and share my poetry. I did things that were really difficult for me. And I thought surely after all of that, I was gonna get a job and I was gonna have a life and a career and money and stability and that didn't happen and it's been four years since I graduated college and I'm still putting my life together so four years later to have all of this crashing down again it sucks and I guarantee that you've probably been through some stuff like that too um, there's this thing that happens in football. I only started watching football a couple years ago. I know a lot of it now, surprisingly. But there's this interesting to me thing that happens in football where one team will be doing really well and they are advancing down the field quickly against their opponents and poising themselves to score a touchdown and the opposing team will call a timeout to stop the momentum of that team that's pushing them into a corner essentially and I think that's incredibly interesting because I had never really seen a game before where that happens, where you use your timeout so strategically. Timeout for the sports that I played growing up was usually just to like talk about a play or oh some kid's skate was untied so they had tied laces. There was never any real strategy <laughs> to a timeout. It was just a timeout and everyone drinks water and hangs out for a second and listens to the coach. This is different. This is something that the team who's losing, who's not having a good time at that moment anyway, they're throwing a stick in front of the people who are running and trying to trip them because this team has momentum and they are surely going to use that momentum, you know, that good feeling that they have to keep it going and get what they want and that kind of reminds me a lot of life I recently have started trying to think of myself as that winning team I don't know how stupid this sounds but anyway I think of my 
myself as the team slash person who is making it down the field so quickly that things have to go wrong for me. Someone is going to throw a stick in front of me. Someone's going to call a timeout on my plans and try to make me stop. Try to throw me off so that when I get back on the field and try to pick myself up, I'm not as strong and I don't have as much determination and I've lost my momentum and I'm angry because I've lost my momentum over something that I couldn't control. You know, the other team can't stop them from taking a timeout if they have one available. They just have to deal with the fact that their really good run that they were making overall is now stopped. I just feel like it's helpful to think of yourself as that winner, not as someone who's just floating through life and then bad things happen and all of a sudden you're just screwed and it feels like you're in that ocean being knocked around, feeling instead like you are determined and you're kicking ass and you're pushing down the field so hard that someone just had to mess it up for you. But when you think of yourself as that winning team, instead of being upset that that happened, it's more like, oh, okay, really? Like, okay, that's cool. You think that calling that timeout is really going to stop me. I'm still going to score this touchdown, you know? Like, I can't believe I'm using a sports metaphor because I'm not an athletic person, but I just thought that that was a very interesting thing and that it's very similar to just what happens in life, you know? And when you start to consider that you're just accomplishing stuff. You are achieving goals and you are working towards them. Even if that means that you took two steps outside your front door today, or if it means that you walked around your neighborhood one time, or if it means that you talked to a stranger, or you decided to dye your hair, or you wrote a song, or you applied to a school, or you sang in front of someone, whatever your fears are that day that you are pushing through and doing, those little victories become a lot more meaningful when you have the power and when you see yourself as someone who's doing well you are doing so well that the world has just gotta knock you down, gotta slow you. And when you get back, when you realize that that's happening, it should then become motivation because you know that you're doing well, that you're doing something good. And that it's not because you suck, it's not because you're doomed. It's not because the world is out to get you in the sense that you can't win. You can still win. You just have to try and be more determined and think of yourself as someone who's doing so well. I guess that I'm trying to speak to this thought of being your own advocate. I think all of these things kind of connect together. I have to, I have to see myself as an authority figure in my life. So that way I can make clear and cut decisions about what's right for me and what I want to do and what matters to me and what I believe. And then when I'm out there actually doing it, 
if something happens that messes it up. I don't sl like slide all the way back into my shell and think, oh well, you know, I'm never gonna accomplish anything or I'm not good enough or I shouldn't have believed in myself. What was I thinking? I have to see myself as someone who's doing so well that this was just bound to happen. Like, this is a, um, a thought that other people have already had in a different way. Some people believe that the world is filled with, like, energies. I believe this too, but the kind of metaphors that they use, I guess, don't always really work for me. Um, but in this school of thought, um, people vibrate at a certain frequency and they say that you can only attract things that you're vibrating at the same frequency as, which I don't like that thought because then it makes it seem like you can never move forward in a way, but they say that you can kind of like attune yourself to a better frequency. So if you spend the day happy, then you're more likely to attract good things. If you spend the day negative, you're more likely to attract bad things, if that makes sense. Um, but they also say that when you are trying to break out of your normal routine and your normal cage that you live in where you have fear and where you keep things small because that's all you believe in for yourself. The second that you try to break those barriers for yourself, they believe that the world is going to try to stop you because it doesn't like being out of alignment, essentially. So if you start telling yourself that you can achieve becoming a famous actor or actress, and that's what you really, really want, and you start making strides towards it, and then something crazy happens, let's say you're on your way to your audition, and you think it's going to be a perfect role for you, and you're so excited, and you get a flat tire. Or maybe there's an accident and you get stuck in traffic and you miss the call. Whatever it is, something is going to happen to you as you are struggling forward. Um, it almost seems like a Murphy's Law type thing. Like if something bad can happen, it will happen. It's kind of almost that same concept. Like if you do try to push yourself beyond your then necessarily life and the world and the energy and the haters are going to knock you back and try and stop you and keep you in your cage and keep you small. I don't know how I feel about that exactly. Like I said, I don't really enjoy the thought that we can't move forward unless we're some great state of mind all the time because I don't think that's super realistic and I don't think that vibrations or frequencies rather um, are like the be all end all because I've had plenty of days where I feel like shit and something really good happens to me or I feel really good and something shitty happens to me so maybe I just don't understand it enough but that whole thought change has never really worked that well for me, but I think that this is kind of like the same idea. Um, the football thing that I was thinking of is like, you're just gonna be stopped. It's going to happen. Whether you want to think that it's just mathematical odds, or if you want to think it's energy, or if you want to think that it's the world testing you, or the devil testing you, or whatever your beliefs are. The important part is that you see it 
for what it is and you realize that bad things are just gonna happen those timeouts that you can't control are going to happen and when those things happen it's so much more relieving to take your own side be there for yourself tell yourself like you've got this it doesn't matter like okay that happened that sucks what are we gonna do about it what's the next step um at the same time this applies to so many other like areas of your life and your confidence this idea of just believing that you're worth something why do you need someone else to tell you what you should be doing or could be doing or how you look or how you feel um, you can be your own authority with those things and you can stick up for yourself it turned out for me that my mom wasn't even as good of a person she didn't really have my back as much as I thought people in your life are going to let you down sometimes it's normal you know it's to, it happens to varying degrees but you are the only person that can 100% have your back and know exactly what is kind of right for you um, this is one of those cliches that people say like you're the only one who's gonna or like you're born with yourself and you die with yourself essentially like you're the only person who's guaranteed to be in your life forever and that statement never really meant that much to me and it kind of still doesn't but the concept does this idea that what if I took that feeling that I have where I really want loyalty and I really want trust all of that stuff I was talking about at the beginning that I want out of my relationships with others what if I applied that to myself because I don't I treat myself like shit I'm not nice to myself I don't compliment myself <laughs> I don't tell myself that I can do things I don't acknowledge the things that I actually have value in it's hard for me to even say that it's hard for me to acknowledge that I am worth something that I have skills in certain areas that I am smart when it comes to certain things I don't know everything and I'm not you know some kind of superhuman and that's fine um, it's okay to just be good at the things that you're good at and interested in the things that you're interested in and you know show yourself that loyalty show yourself that sense of commitment um, I don't know how cheesy this sounds but when you really think about it you know do you treat yourself the way that you want your friend your best friend in the world or your sibling or your parent or whoever means most to you do you treat yourself the way that you want them to or do you treat yourself like you're less than them or like you're just some person and that everyone else is more than that um, because that's just not true and I think that if we start to treat ourselves like we are meaningful and have value and Can handle things and if we recognize and really appreciate those good things you know I was saying how 
lot of the times it seems like bad things just keep happening and the good things are really short-lived but that's because I I don't process the good things that much I, I kind of think of them as flukes I guess I'm like oh yeah I won that award well that's cool but it really doesn't mean that much or it probably won't happen again or whatever I don't sit there and be like you know what that was pretty cool you did that thing you spent hours every day and you did it you know you worked really hard and that's dope like you have strength you are smart at this thing you deserve to feel good about yourself um, I never talk to myself like that I never take the time to appreciate myself and the things that I do and can do. I don't take the time to appreciate my body and all that it can do. I don't see myself as good, I guess. I always just think that everyone else is better than me and that I am weak and small hopeless and never going to get anywhere in life and that's just bad and not true and I don't want it to be true. I want to pick myself up and say, you know, fuck your time out. I don't care what you want to throw in my way. I don't care that I missed that audition. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to crush it. You know, this just gives me five more days to So it's 
might be something different and you just recognize when something bad happens that like this this doesn't have any power over me like I get to choose and this is what I choose this is what I want so that's what's gonna happen um, it feels really good to be that person for yourself and not to be calling your mom or your brother or your sister and saying what should I do you know what you want to do so just make it happen no matter what it takes um, you will if you want to you are capable so don't let anyone treat you badly for one but also don't let yourself treat you badly <laughs> um, be good to yourself I guess and don't let yourself down do what's right by you and I guarantee that you'll be feeling happier and more successful and in a better place than you were the day before um, so yeah thank you guys for listening I hope that you enjoyed this and I will see you in my next video